Right now, you're looking at a long and tubular reptile with a unique quirk. It doesn't have any legs. At first glance, it might be easy to assume that this is a snake, but don't be fooled. This is actually a legless lizard. What's the difference? Let's find out. My name is Ben Zeno, and my mission is to inspire you to learn about and conserve the amazing wildlife that's just waiting to be discovered all around us. Today, we're on the hunt for a bizarre looking reptile that is both lightning fast and a highly capable burrower, which can make finding one quite tricky. To try and track down one of these elusive lizards, we're headed to North Carolina's coastal plain, where the loose sandy soils help to create excellent habitat for this species and some more standard looking lizards. After a few hours of hiking, I had found plenty of mosquitoes, but not much else. And that's when I spotted a glistening patch of scales half buried in the leaves right beside the trail. It's okay, it's okay. This is the Eastern glass lizard. The reason they're called glass lizards is there's actually two reasons. For one thing, these scales are unkeeled and extremely glossy in color, as you can see. And the other reason they're called glass lizards is because they are capable of caudal autotomy. And caudal autotomy is when a lizard chooses to drop its own tail to try and distract a predator in a last ditch effort to escape. Now that is a last resort for our glass lizards because it does take them quite a while to regrow their tails. Now I know you might be thinking, Ben, isn't a legless lizard just a snake? Well actually, our legless lizards do have quite a few differences from our true snakes. For one thing, you'll notice that our glass lizard here has external ears. Now, our snakes do have ears, they're internal though, so they do not have external ear openings like our glass lizard. Another thing is the skull of our glass lizard is still 100% a lizard skull. And what I mean by that is it does not have the extra bone or the separated mandibular bone that our snakes have, which allow them to engulf such large meals. So our glass lizard skulls are not nearly as kinetic as our snake skulls are. And one more less noticeable difference, at least from the outside, is that our glass lizards do have far fewer vertebrae than our snakes and actually far longer tails. Another cool difference is that snakes actually don't have eyelids. Instead, they have a clear scale called a spectacle, but legless lizards do in fact have those true eyelids. Also, glass lizards don't have the forked tongue, which is a shared feature of both snakes and the varanid lizards. Okay, but when did legless lizards become legless? Well, it turns out this is a pretty complicated question, both because snakes and lizards belong to the same order and because lizards have actually gained and lost legs many times throughout their evolutionary history. All glass lizards belong to the genus Ovisaurus, which literally translates to snake lizard. And most paleontologists agree that this genus probably arose sometime during the Eocene, about 40 to 55 million years ago. Now this is interesting because many modern snake lineages, like the colubrids and the vipers, also appeared around the same time period, meaning that glass lizards have actually been around about as long as many modern snakes. If you're interested in learning more about the ancient history of snakes and lizards, I highly recommend checking out this video I worked on a couple years ago with Dr. Michael Caldwell a paleontologist and expert in prehistoric reptiles. Now, glass lizards are really cool, of course, because they don't have legs. And the reason they don't is because these guys are basically sand swimmers. So they live pretty much exclusively in these more upland sandy soil areas. And these are incredibly quick diurnal hunters. So they're using their amazing eyesight and an excellent sense of smell to track down invertebrate prey items. They are swimming after them in the sand or in the leaf litter, picking them up, thrashing them around, and swallowing them whole. That is their feeding style. The larger ones have been known to also eat smaller lizards and even things like amphibians, but for the most part, they are still preying on invertebrates. Wow, these are such a special animal and such a cool example of convergent evolution, where two different organisms arrive at the same adaptation because they live in similar habitats and maybe have similar diets. So our glass lizards, just like our snakes, are critically important middle layer of our ecosystems. They are preying on a variety of organisms, but also food for higher level consumers. All right, everyone, this has been such a cool and unique little animal to film, but unfortunately, it's time to put it back. So we'll sit it down right here and let it go about its day.
Bye, friend. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.